Hello, and welcome to Stars in Your Ears, Episode 5, Series 2, coming to you live from this glistening ice cap slope. We're working with at least three inches here. <laughs> Not the first time you've said that. Three inches of snow. We're skiing on snow. This really is a podcast for all seasons. Well, I don't know about you guys. I'm definitely feeling like I'm being pulled to the ground, but I wouldn't exactly call this a slob. I can't wait to get to the bottom. Not the first time you said that either. Really, Jess? <laughs> Really? I meant the luxurious après ski facilities. I hope there's schnapps. I hope there's fondue. I hope there's a hot tub. Where are we exactly? We are on Cockfosters Lane in North London. Oh, oh so no schnapps. Nah, I've got a carton of Umbongo to share. And no fondue. I've got baby bell in my salad pets, but no can do fondue. And no hot tub. Nope, just Cockfosters Lane with a layer of grey slush. Oh, oh, I thought skiing was supposed to be easier than this. It's better if you dodge the bollards. Oh, I'll try. Oh! next time. Please can I just do my job and start this show before my mouth is frozen shut by this icy wind? Chance would be a fine thing. I'm sorry? I said chance would be a fine thing, Michael. I wouldn't mind that happening. Your mouth freezing shut. Right. It's going to be one of those episodes, is it? Good to know. Ladies and gentlemen of Cock Foster's Lane and beyond, please join me in welcoming the Ice Queen herself. She's the woman of a thousand voices, apparently. Impressionist, singer, comedian, star of spitting image. Expert skier. You've fallen over and you're sliding on your bum. It's my signature move. Please welcome Jess Robinson. Wrapped up warm, it's not so tough I've got a woolly scarf I've got a pom-pom hat And I've got my hand in a muff Makes a change Welcome to the show You're gonna hear stars in your ears There's no better place to go If you wanna get stars in your ears Stars in your ears Stars, stars, stars in your ears now, I think. Uh, you're on your bum again, Jess. I know, but I slid down the hill on it for ages. I reckon we're nearly there. Which reminds me, where are we going again? And why couldn't we just drive? Because of the snow. Yeah, it's a good seven or eight inches now. I don't think you know how big an inch is, Kitch. If you weren't 60 feet away from me, I'd flick your massive ears. I'm right next to you. Guys, where are we going? You'll see soon enough. I need to know whether to crack open another hand-warming heat pack. A what? One of these. They heat up in your pocket and keep your hands warm. Or for me, I pop one in each pocket and they keep my thighs warm. Wait, wait, what? My thighs get cold. No, what did you call them? Heat packs? Yeah, they're little bags of weird chemicals that when combined release amazing amounts of heat. What did you think they were? Uh, little bags of booze. Why would I have little bags of booze in my pockets? For when you run out of diamond whites! Kiss, did you eat one? Well, technically I drank one, but yeah. It's currently in my stomach doing its thing. I thought we were having a baby. Oh, Oh, I hope it doesn't burn at the other end. We really should get you to a hospital. Oh, yeah. Is there one nearby? Nah. Where in the frosty fuck are we going? It's down there, just down this hill. And I'm very sorry, Michael, that you're so frustrated you were driven to say frosty fuck. Right, brace yourselves. Oh, oh. (sighs) Ah. Steady on, Jess. It's a bit steep. We must be going down Muswell Hill now. It's really... It's it's near vertical. At least 40 degrees. No, it's way colder than that, Rob. We're wearing gloves, silly Billy. Jess, I don't think this is a good idea. Uh, No, me neither. Me neither. Oh, let let go of me. Uh, Jess, get off. I can't. I'm still on my bum. Uh, Oh, you're uh, squeezing too hard, Jess. Just trying to steady myself. Uh, Jess, you're aggravating the contents of the heat pack in my stomach and I'm worried about... Uh, I'm like, uh, oh no. Ooh, sorry guys. There goes my chocolate advent calendar. My eyebrows. Well, that melted the snow. And the baby bell. Fondue. Breadstick, anyone? Oh, I've got curried Cadbury's down here. Oh. Well, we certainly arrived with a bang. Oh, I hope there's a top shop nearby. These leggings are ruined. Well, on the bright side, we're meeting my friend. They said we could crash any time. <sighs> Guys, we, we could crash any time. Did you nearly risk our lives for that pun? 
<laughs> Actually, don't answer. I know you did. Yeah, it's been a long year. I think I've gone a bit weird. Uh, so is front porch shall we demolished and burnt to a crisp. Yeah, Jess, who lives here? <laughs> Thank you for having me. How fabulous. What an introduction. Crikey. It's oh, live up to. We like to make people feel special because yeah, it's downhill all the way from here now. <laughs> very sorry we crashed into your house. It was totally Michael's sorry. fault. Sorry. That's OK. How are you doing today? Oh, fine. Yes, I've been um, I've, I've been writing jokes for Spitting Image. I don't know if you've heard of that programme, Jess. Yes. Uh, so last week we had Matt Ford on. Oh, no, the week yeah. before last we had Matt Ford on. Yeah. Now we've got someone from the actual writing team. Well, Ford is, Ford is in the writing room, but he just ends up writing stuff for himself to do Boris. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you do loads of voices and characters. Are you going to maybe be doing some voices on the show? Well, I no, no, I'm not, and I, I, I missed a trick. I should have, I should have, because I do funny voices. I don't really do impressions because I'm sort of we lazy. We don't either, to be fair. <laughs> well, well, I know you, do, you know you're you're Jacinda Ardern's uncanny. Um, but um, not that I know what she sounds like. But, um, uh, <laughs> the, the yeah, I do silly voices rather than impressions because I never sort of got round to being, you know, uh, putting the effort in and being a specialist like like you, Jess. Well, you, know, you say that, mm. but uh, we are going to talk later about your act when you first started out, yes. and that sounds very specialist. Yes, it was extremely special. Um, yes, <laughs> I'm excited about that. <laughs> so, as well as uh, obviously being the pantomime newcomer of Great Britain, <laughs> um, I actually won an award uh, as best mythical creature for the, the Great British Pantomime. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know, but the band, you must feel quite intimidated now, knowing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the presence of greatness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> when you started out mm. at school, did you do silly voices and characters and... I certainly did do silly voices. And I, and, I, and um, my my nickname when I was a kid yeah. um, was Buzz. My dad called me Buzz because I was always making stupid noises and doing silly voices. <laughs> oh. So I was known as that for a really long time. No, no, just known as Buzz because I was always making a racket, always doing impressions, always... And... and doing Daleks and things and all that sort of stuff. Like, I was really into the sound of things, which I think why I ended up playing the drums in the end. It's like, I like the sound of stuff. I like the, the noise of things more than anything else. The Dalek I do is pretty good, if you wanted to hear oh, it. Please, oh, yeah. please, can we hear please. We want to hear all of the characters. <laughs> like that. You, know, you, sort of, you, sort of, you sort of gargle while, you, while you're talking. Oh, my yeah, gosh, right. can you do that again? <laughs> Like That's that. so yeah. amazing. What other monsters were there in Doctor Who? <laughs> it's, all it's all that kind of like just doing exaggerated things, really. Oh. Yeah, I was sort of in, really into that when I was little. Did you do cartoon characters and stuff as well? Sort of kind of get halfway to Donald Duck. Oh. <laughs> I can sort of get halfway there and then... <laughs> All this kind of like basically anything absurd or over the top, which is where I've ended up with my comedy career, is is was sort of red meat to me. I love all that. I love all crazy sounding things, things for yucks, you know, as they call it in the in the comedy mm, trade. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I feel like our upbringings were pretty similar in that we both grew up in villages. Yes, uh, went to little village schools. 
Yeah. Were you the sort of kid who put on shows with your with your pals or entertained your friends in the playground? Or um, n- not at school so much, but in the summer holidays, I had this cousin who would write a show that we had to do to our to our parents and our siblings. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and he would write these great long shows and he'd get the Puffin joke book and it would all be jokes out of the Puffin joke book and then we'd do these shows as sort of musical numbers and bits that I would steal from the Muppets and stuff and we'd, th- we'd, we'd kind of do that. And looking back on it, I, my parents and my cousin, his, his parents, they're sort of like rictus endurance grins during this stuff and <laughs> it were like heart, a welcome applause, uh, probably the reason I ended up... Um, like enjoying performing so much, and so they have a lot to answer for. Because I, I, I haven't got any of the scripts <laughs> anymore, but I could, I could ask my cousin John to dig them up, and I, I bet they're, I bet they're, you know, rubbish. <laughs> Is your cousin John a performer now as well? No, 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 no. He's no, he's not. No, not, not at all. Um, and because, it, because it, I have, I've had a lot of things where I've done stuff with other people, and then, and then they've sort of fallen by the wayside, and I've carried on. <laughs> like there was a bunch of people when I first got to uni who I sort of press ganged into being a sketch group with me. You know, one of them's one of them's a doctor of geography, and the other's a lawyer. They, they basically all fell away, and I carried on showing off. <laughs> um, uh, because in the end, that was the difference between me and them, because right. I was a show off. <laughs> yeah. So when you started doing the pub landlord, was there one person in particular that inspired the character and the voice or No, not 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 at all because it because it really was a stopgap in a show. We were doing we were in Edinburgh doing the Edinburgh doing the fringe. Yeah. I was in a, a thing with Harry Hill um uh playing the drums in a little band that he and I and another guy had called pub in, called pub band. We had lots of different bits and pieces and at the end the three of us played mad covers. So we did this really we did. We jammed in an afternoon and worked to set out in an afternoon. We did this really odd thing where we did. So we did like the sound of like Material Girl. It was sort of vamped along the um, or or like a virgin. Da, 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 da. And then he'd start singing the theme from Dad's Army over that back. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd go to the chorus chorus of Material Girl, and then we'd go back to the like a virgin vamp, and then he'd sing Run Rabbit, Run Rabbit, Run over it. <laughs> And it worked. It just, we, it just, this happened spontaneously in rehearsal. And it just worked. So we thought, oh, we'll do that then. So anyway, we did this show and we'd been rehearsing it in London and previewing it in London. And I, I was going to come up with a linking thing. And the thing I came up with was a character thing. It just didn't work. It didn't work at all for, for all sorts of reasons. But, but the chief one was it was a really bad idea. And then <laughs> we, got, we got to Edinburgh and I, the opening night, uh, I'm, Harry's like, well, what are you going to do? So I said, I don't know. Well, how about we, because we're in the cabaret bar at the Pleasant. I said, how about we say, that the compare hasn't shown up and the barman has offered to fill in from the behind the bar here. And Harry's like, yeah, whatever, another one of your brilliant ideas. <laughs> um, and I went on, like, having scribbled down three things and did the, immediately went, well, all right, hello, everyone, uh, thanks for coming. Sorry, the, the compare's not shown up, so I've offered to fill in. And I had an act, like, just then and there, did sort of five minutes mussing out these gags I'd written down, then brought Harry on. Harry did his 40 minutes, and I wrote a load of stuff down while he was on. And at the end of it, I thought, right, well, that works. So I'll write some stuff tonight. And we did it again the following night. And then the third day, I cut all my hair off. <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> um, it had to be, it had to have no, he had to have no hair. Right. And then and then we did three weeks of that, I think, or two and a half weeks of that in Edinburgh. And got a Perrier nomination at the end of that week, the last, which was sort of mad. Because the show was throw, literally thrown together, like just like yeah. I described it. And then we went on a tour and we did a big, long tour. We did about 70, 80 dates. And by the end of it, I had an act. Because wow. we had to, because we had to put an interval in, because we were playing little theatres and art centres. We had to put uh-huh. an interval in for the bar, and and so I had to do longer because I had to compare. And by the end of the run, I had I had forty minutes of material for it. And then I went back to the circuit, said I'm not doing my old thing anymore. I'm doing this, and and it's because it was invented as a stopgap that I never stopped to figure it out. And I think if I'd stopped to figure it out, it would never have worked. I'd have overthought it. I'd have got right. stuck. I'd have got hung up on it. But it was born in the sort of clinch of having to make it work. Night after night after night, and that's that's yeah. amazing. Now I'm really uh, deeply fortunate that that happened because it was, like I said, it was to fill the next five minutes, and it's kept me busy for 25 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, what year did you go back? And then was it the next? So that was year in ninety. F- that was in ninety four. So in that yeah. year, ninety four, I was playing in playing in the pub band, and I had another mo- musical comedy act which was called Guns and Moses that was supposed to be the world's only. <laughs> Jewish heavy metal band, um, and I was the drummer, and they had me, they had me in like a, in a in a in a, in a Palestinian headdress, and I wasn't allowed out from behind the drum kit. Really and we did those that year, 
And then I took a year, I, I didn't go the, in 95. So 96, I went back with my first actual hour of pub landlord. I got a Perrier nomination that year, which was, which was basically completely like ridiculous, mind blowing. Cause it was all, a, I was like, can I make this work? I don't know. I can, I know I can do an hour, but I don't know if anyone's going to like it. And, and, and I sort of haven't looked back. It, it's, that is it was, amazing. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And it was all luck. It was all like quite, quite literally a stop gap and a, an accident. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, follow your instincts, I always say. Honey, listen close. Listen close, Because this is where I really need ya. I need ya. If this is your bag, then give us a tag and post on your social media. Please rate us, validate us, show us how much you care. Hit subscribe, give us stars out of five. And don't forget to share. Have you ever felt judged for having the voice you do? Probably not, I would imagine. But Oh, yeah, yeah de most definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I do that thing of, um, you know, my family's quite posh, yeah. but we're, we're, we're downwardly mobile. You know, I, uh, my <laughs> grandfather was an ambassador. My dad worked to British Rail. I'm, I, your mum's you know, my school governor. Or your mum, well, my mum's my your school governor, your old school governor. Yeah, but I'm, but, you know, I ended up in entertainment, so I'm on the, I'm on the downward. <laughs> So, but I do have that thing where, um, you know, if I've got to, if I've got to take a car to a garage, I start knocking consonants off and everything. You do, I, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. Oh, yes, yeah, in a right old state. And it was, it was there was one, there was one place in, when I used to live in Tooting, there was a, a bloke I used to take my car to in particular, who I just sort of think if I, if I can sort of London this up a bit, it's going to save me money. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> He's going to take me if he thinks I'm posh. But there you go. <laughs> I've never had that problem, Al, I've got to be honest. Well, you lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you're, lu you're lucky bastard. He <laughs> can't go. come through the front entrance at hotels, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, through the treadmills. <laughs> um, Al, I would like you to judge the band for their voices yes. now. Yes, all right. They are going to say, yeah. I've got stars in my ears. And I'd like you to tell me, just by hearing them, what sort of character they are yeah. and what sort of drink they'd order in the pub. All right, okay. Uh, let's start with Kitch. I've got stars in my ears. He wants a snake bite. <laughs> 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 And uh, and he can drink up the other end of the bar. Thanks very much. Um, <laughs> but he sounds he sounds direct. He sounds reliable. He sounds like someone you can mm. you know depend on. Michael, I've got stars in my ears. Oh, <laughs> mm. stage school. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they have a dash of stage school in there. <laughs> um. Uh, <laughs> So um, a nice Malbec. Oh, Ooh. that's true, actually. <laughs> Not port and lemon. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Rob, I've got stars in my ears. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, an iron brew. Oh, an iron so brew. They, you're the second person that's thought Scott. Um, Rob is Scottish. Then you sounded it for that brief. Flip. Yeah, that Matt yeah. thought that too, Matt Fordy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's interesting. Why? Where are you from, Rob? I'm American, but it's very diluted the accent now. So yeah, that's long gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Gosh, incredible. Yeah. How long go. you been here then? Forever. Yeah, uh, twenty four years. Oh yeah. Oh no, it's there. There it long is. Long time. Yeah, that, I still have the hard R's. <laughs> I still have the hard R's. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a hard ass. Hey. But... Hey. Hey. <laughs> well, well. So I think lovely. you're an excellent mimic. If you can do that of, of Rob so quickly, could you do Michael? I need, I need to hear him again. I've got stars in my ears. <laughs> I've got stars in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like a port. I'd like a port and lemon, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh so we, better, we better have we better have uh, Kitch for good measure. I've got stars in me ears. I've got stars in me ears. Yeah. And I like I like playing drums. That's right. But, what, but the problem with playing drums is you have to pack them up afterwards. <laughs> it's a right, right pain in ass. It's a bastard. Is what it is. It's a bastard is what it is. Yeah. What sort of music did you listen to when you were growing up, Al? Uh, well, um, I uh, my. Dad uh, didn't believe in pop music, so we like. Right. 
I think we had we had one Beatles album in the house. That was it. Like we had Abbey Road, um, mm. and and I think a copy one. of Take Five, the the Brubeck Quartet album, yeah. and that was it. And the rest was classical music. And he would he would and still does have classical music blaring in the house. So at Easter, for instance, it would always be the St Matthew Passion on all day, every day, and all this sort of stuff. So. I very much, uh, uh, my, and then my daughters had, I think, two, uh, my daughters, my sisters rather, had two ABBA records, and that was about it. At school, there was a real um, punk thing. I went to boarding school, and there was a real punk thing going on. And I've, I'm sort of, I've got this sort of um, uh, perverse streak that if everyone's into something, I'm just not. Uh, you're not going to get me to be interested in it at all. Right. Um. So I ended up, I ended up after prog rock had been and gone, mm -hmm. getting into prog rock because everyone else is into punk. So I reacted to punk with prog rock, so I got it the wrong way round. So I was sort of into, <laughs> into sort of Genesis and stuff when I was, at, when I was sort of uh, 12, 13, 14, because everyone else was into UK subs and Sham 69 and, and uh, all that sort of stuff. And also because I used to play in orchestras and stuff and, and the sort of, um, I kind of got it. I got what they were doing with all the harmonics and the bigger chords and stuff than just blokes shouting and spitting at each other. I've never really understood punk. It always struck, struck me as more of a pose than prog rock. Oh, sorry, Al, my mum's calling. I just need, sorry, I just need to get this really quickly. Yeah, sure. Hello, hi, Mummy. Hi, hi, Jackie. Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Everything okay in the village? Yes, I've got some shocking gossip oh. for you. What, what's oh, happened? Go on. I bumped into Al Murray's mother, Juliet no. Murray, oh, wow. in the village no. shop. No, you didn't. <laughs> she was just buying a tin of tomato soup, yeah. and I was looking at the baked beans. Right. Oh, right. And after we'd paid at the till, I said, oh, how nice to see you. Yeah. Yes. She said, you're Jessie's mum, aren't you? I remember Jessie. Isn't she doing well? Oh. And I said, yes, let's go and have a drink in the pub and catch up. Oh, so we went nice. over to the pub, mm. and we both had a gin and tonic. Ooh, and it was really lovely. nice to talk about our children. So she told me oh, okay. um, yes. about Al's childhood. Oh, he sure. was part of an mm. orchestra in the church yeah. because oh. the vicar got all the kids together who mm. played instruments, including Al, on his drum kit. Mm. <laughs> and they all had to learn the recorder. Standard. Everyone had to learn the recorder, right, and yeah. Al's mum said it was absolutely awful. <laughs> but <laughs> Al, Al's drumming was fantastic. Oh, also, yeah. um, nice. at one stop. point, there was going to be a very important thing happening at the church, which was that the bishop was going to come. Oh, <gasps> and right. so this whole orchestra of multi-talented children played... <laughs> Match of the Day Anthem. <laughs> it was arranged for them, and they played the Match of the Day Anthem while the bishop walked in. Is this true, Al? And oh, Al that. played the drums true. for this his entry. All, this is all true. <laughs> that is amazing. This is all true. Paul Drake was the vicar, very talented. He would, he would do these arrangements. You got the feeling he was more into that than God at times. <laughs> <laughs> See, Mum, Al's actually here, so he can tell us all about at home, it. Oh, so they oh, used to play well. charades a lot, the family. Oh, right. And Alistair, uh, Alistair had a cousin that he played with a lot, and they'd oh, do yeah. Batman and Robin. Oh, well, yeah. a bit well, I told Juliet about your uh, dramas on the fireplace. No, you don't need to talk about And how we had to endlessly <laughs> watch your plays oh, and dear. how the children in the village, <laughs> no. who had never come across anyone creative like right, you, no. um, <laughs> would stand at the corner of the sitting room and then you would waft across the room to oh. ballet music oh. while they stood there with their jaws dropped mm. in complete amazement and lack of understanding. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, well, it sounds like you had a very nice time, Mum. We had about five gin and tonics together right. and she didn't mention his hair at all. Oh. Um, but, uh, and so I didn't mention it because I thought that might be the one thing that's embarrassing. OK, well, oh. thanks for not mentioning that then, Mum. I'd better go now because the right. vicar's coming round at three and That's Nelly all... has just done a big poo in the front drive. Oh, <laughs> bye, <laughs> everyone. Time. Special okay, hugs bye. and kisses to Rob. Bye, Jackie. Oh, bye. Bye. Bye, bye, Jackie. Bye. 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 bye Jack. Wow. That's, well, there that's we go. My mum there. I'm sorry about that. That's Could all 100% you... true. That's very... <laughs> Is that's, it really? That's a bang on, yeah, the vicar with the drums, with the, with the orchestra and the... 
Goodness knows what it must have sounded like, but um, yeah. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's Jess's impression session. So this is the point in the show where I would usually teach you an impression. Mm. But because you started out with an act doing... Did you do impressions of sound effects? I did sound effects. My friend Dave Lamb was telling me about this. I did, yeah, I did sound effects. So it's basically... It was a sort of glorified pub trick. And I discovered that if you do, if you do sort of... Um, you can do very simple sounds through a PA and they end up sounding... They just sound... They end up sounding amazing. Especially because... Um, you know, an SM58 or whatever has a, this proximity effect thing. So the closer you get to, the deeper the sound is. You get a deeper, deeper, round, more rounded sound. So, right. so yeah. basically, if you want to do impressions of firearms through a PA, they always <laughs> yeah. sound amazing. So I ended up with this really mad act. Basically, I'd come and go, hello, I'm a murderer. I'd like to do some murders for you now. And then I'd mime things. So I'd like the first one was I'd like now like to do, I can only just, I, I can't really remember the patter anymore. So I sort of banished it from my brain. But um, <laughs> I'd like to do, the first murder I'd like to do for you now is a Wolford PPK 9mm semi-automatic <laughs> pistol <laughs> as favoured by double o, fictional agent 007 James Bond with silencer. And then I'd do this and um, uh, uh, and then I'd make the like it was a box in front of me and I'd go... <laughs> like that. So open the box, <laughs> then get the pistol up, <laughs> assemble it, and then I'd squ- screw on the silencer. All the, needs explaining. So... Yeah. Then, <laughs> and then I blow over the blow over the end like that and put it back in its box. And then I and that used to absolutely kill, right? And because I threw a PA, it sounds amazing, yeah. right? And then I and then I do an AK forty seven, and then I do a rocket launcher, but like mess about and like add on sort of basically some of these sort of Doctor Who sci fi Star Trek noises I developed as a kid. Wow. And um. And then, of course, the, the, the sort of the high point of it, it ended with me like starting a propeller and feeding things into the propeller. It was a sort of big finish. <laughs> but um, I, I, the, the, the best impression was the car boot opening. Well, I'd do this car boot. I'd say, I've got to get the rocket launcher out of the car boot. And it went like this. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> and then you close it, you go. <laughs> <laughs> And and then I'd say, oh, it's a, it's a Passat or a Cavalier or something. Because whatever, whatever, yeah. it was used to be you, you, so much of it relied on, and, it, and it's quite a, quite an interesting thing. This I think with um, sometimes with with when you're doing sound effects or impressions, if you assert what it is, people believe you. So you yeah. you could just go, this is what a machine gun sounds like, and they go, wow, how'd you do? Yeah. How do you know it sounds like that? Yeah. And you're like, I'll just make it. I'm making it up. I'm, I'm, I'm blowing raspberries down a PA for Christ's sake. <laughs> but the car boot was the one which used to absolutely kill. Can you mm. teach us how to do the car boot? Well, so first you have to do a like, sort of like a like you have to go. So just to just to like you, yeah, because that's you unlocking it. Yeah. And then you go. So then you do like a breathing noise. Are you breathing in or out? Out. <laughs> but at the same time, go. So. That's it. That's cricket. <laughs> That's it. Don't overcook like it though. A cat with kitch. A Not so much kitsch. It's got to be nice and smooth. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. And then you close it. You do it back again. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it back. <laughs> that's that's it. good. Very good. That's really good. I want to hear Michael's. I, yeah, Michael. I, I ain't going near it. I'm Michael, not going near this. The, oh, go on. This is for your oh, little God. Nissan. Hang on, hang on. I've got to concentrate now. <laughs> we can't do it. Amazing. Hang on, hang on. Breathing out and... Like that. Yeah, nearly. <laughs> no, no, no. You sort of got to sing a note going up, but like that. Like it, it's like it's like you're humming up, going, but then take the actual hum out. It's it's not unrelated to the to the you know the water drop that. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, that's good. Have you got it, Rob? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a small boot. <laughs> no, there's a there's a lot it. of tongue action in it. It's really hard. There's a lot of tongue in it, yeah. yeah. I can't get Steady the breath. On. There you go. That's yeah. pretty much oh. that's it, pretty much it, Jess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fiat Panda. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but can you do a klaxon though? That's the the, oh, the real oh, test. No. Let's oh, let's hear a, cla- a klaxon. <laughs> 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 Again, it's to do. It's like the, a bit related to the Dalek. We have to gargle and so it's. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, I'm, I'm too tense. I'm too tense. Uh, no. <laughs> Doesn't have to be that long either. It could just be. Uh, 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 uh. I sound more like the that's bird it, that gets it. its tail pulled at the end. You'll of get there, but you've got a high pitched voice to me, so that's what that is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wasted. I'm wasted. On the <laughs> and then dinosaurs. I, uh, also, um, Jurassic Park with this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit chewy. <laughs> That's a bit as well. Yeah. That's like a slow klaxon. <laughs> yeah, well, they're all the same. They're all, if you once you can master the gargling and doing a tone at the same yeah. time, there's a whole range of things available to That's you. That's exactly what I say about impressions. <laughs> Just a little bit higher or a little bit lower, but it's all Mr yeah. Bean in the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, kitsch. Yes. Jess. Would you like to introduce your fantasy duet this week? Because we, because Kitch is a bit of a fan and you play yeah. the drums brilliantly, Al. Well, that's too kind. We thought this week we'd let Kitch do his fantasy duet. Great. Which is uh, you two having a bit of a drum off. Because it's time for our fantasy duet. Duet. Lovely kitsch. Beautiful. Wow, I sound even Lovely. more like thicker than normal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've done that classic uh, Cooper Rich uh, album where they, they pan to either side. Have yeah. you? Yeah, nice. yeah. Oh, amazing. Uh, so, um, yeah, I guess we just do it. All right, then, here we go. Are you ready? Okay, Al, challenge number one. From this drum fill, can you name that song? Oh, um, no. I know it, but I don't know it. Anyway, all right then, Kitch, challenge number two. Play the right bell with the sole of your shoe. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Smooth. Nice one, Al. Challenge number three, play We Will Rock You with Just Your Knee. <laughs> Oh, nailed it. Nailed it. Okay. Here we go, Kitch. Challenge number four. Play a rhythm with the tom known as the floor. Floor tom rhythm, please. That's it. I like the way you hit that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Al. Thanks. I've been working on that one. That's strong. Lovely stuff, Al. Challenge number five. Play the disco beat from Staying Alive. You can tell by the way I sing my sing that I'm king of the drum. I go on. Oh, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Okay, Kitch, challenge number six. Play a fast roll with just your best sticks. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Oh, my fingers. Ooh. <laughs> Good impro. <laughs> okay, Al, challenge number seven. Can you play a beat in the metre of 11? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ready, Kitch. Challenge number eight. Play them paradiddles on a china plate. Oh! oh, oh beautiful. <laughs> Near there, Al. Challenge number nine. Hit the crash cymbal once you've down the wine. Mistletoe and wine. <laughs> 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 Let's see what you learned for challenge number 10. I want to hear your car boot again. Beautiful! (laughs) (laughs) Challenge number 11, same as number one. From this introduction, name that song. Oh, that's Led Zeppelin, isn't it? That'll do, that'll do, that'll do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good times, bad times. So, who's won, Jess? Oh, it's definitely me. No way. 
Come on, I played 11 beats in a bar and nice, counted it. Nice. You've shown your skills and we're all in awe, so play us out, boys, and we'll call it a draw. Oh, oh my god, my face is melted. <laughs> Flat oh, that, baby. Flat beautiful. That. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Oh, the last word, Almarie. Fantastic. Yay. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, what a team. Was that like you playing with the vicar? That was that was better than <laughs> no, the vicar. No, that's wrong. <laughs> It was better than playing with the vicar. Yes. Oh, wow. Put that on your gravestone kit. <laughs> Al, is there anything you want to plug, by the way? Oh, yes. Um, why not? Um, I have a new book out Ooh. called uh, oh. Last Hundred Years, a Give or Take and All That, which is a, a, a comedy history book um, in Ooh. which I called A Misremembered Journey Through the 20th Century. It's out on Thursday uh, uh, this week, whenever that is, whatever day Thursday this week is. I never know. I, I, basically, your um, podcast will be out by then. Where can people get this amazing book? Um, Amazon, uh, Waterstones, the signed copies at Waterstones, actually. Um, Ooh. and it's it's all the things it's all the things you wanted to know about. So you know, Lenin, the warm up guy, Stalin, the main event, um, uh, <laughs> Beatlemania, uh, um, the invention of sex, because of course no one had sex until the nineteen sixties. Uh, absolutely not. Yeah, 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 so, yeah of course. You know, uh, and there were people threatening to have sex in the nineteen twenties, but they never got round to it. <laughs> and then, Fortunately, the war came along and stopped them having any yeah, sex. Yeah. So, um, so it's all that kind of stuff. And there's a bit about punk rock, and uh, and then there's, um, but it stops kind of in 2000 because I because the last 20 years do feel to me like I've got trousers older than some of the events <laughs> sure. that, like, that I would have had to cover. And also, it gets quite litigious if people are still alive and you start writing mm. books about them. Right. So, mm. um, uh, so I'm better off writing about all the dead people in this book. So anyway, yes, it's called The Last 100 Years, Give or Take and all that. And if people know the 1066 and all that books, classic comedy history book from a long time ago, it's not like that. Sure. Because I wasn't going to write a pastiche of a classic book. I was just going to write my own um, daft book. But it, when I look at it now, there's more in it than I thought. Um, uh, You've worked very hard. Are there lots of well, pictures? Uh, there, there are some nice, there's some beautiful cartoons. There's England winning the World Cup. There's um, the Channel Tunnel. Um, uh, and lots of lessons, important lessons from history. But the main lesson from history is keep your hopes up, your head down, and a spare pair of underwear on you. <laughs> Understood. Oh, Got it. Kitch Good understands that more than most. Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are going to put the link to that in the episode notes. Wonderful. So, Thank listeners, you. go and buy and and try and enjoy. That's my. Yeah, that, that, Speaking's done for the day. That's good, good <laughs> plug work there. Thank you very much. Thank you so, so, so much for coming on Stars in Your Ears, doing all of your voices, your sound effects, playing the drums and just being generally absolutely It's a total brilliant. pleasure, darling. It is absolutely wonderful work with such professionals. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see Michael again after our time together. Dear no, one, <laughs> dear one. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Stars in Your Ears, featuring my very own snowflakes, Jessington World of Adventures. On keys, it was Michael Let It Snow Rolston. On drums, Jonathan Baby, It's Cold Outside Kitchen. On guitar and bass, it was Rob Frozen Logger Lamont. Our celebrity guest was the fantastic Al Frosty the Snowman Murray. Our sound engineer was Joe Jack Frost Walker. Special thanks for added silliness to Robin Calder's Ice Morgan. This podcast was produced by Amanda Ice Ice Baby Redman. I've been Jess Rockin' Robin Robinson. Until next time, my dingle dangles. Bye! You've had stars in Oh, I love that. Me too. I miss him already. Who are we talking about? Do you reckon he'll stay in touch? Absolutely not. So, what do you want to do now? Well, there's an industrial estate over there. Yes. Well, you want to get a few big bottles of cider and drink there? Are we 14? No, but I can play 14. I can play any age, really. Botox. Why do you want us to drink outside? I don't know. I mean, I got quite into it during lockdown. Parks, bus stops, beyond the playground. You name it, I drank there. Graveyards? Oh, yeah, big time. I'm up for it. Everyone was dying to get in there. Yeah, me too. Michael? Dead centre of town. Fine, but let's not get into trouble. We're not going to get into trouble. Oh, look, there's four brand new Mini Coopers there. With the engines still running. And no one inside. Cider, anyone? Better not, Kitch. Why not? Because we're driving. We've got a heist to plan. <laughs>